Hi everyone, it's Pastor Sarah Stoby from Bayshore Lutheran Church, and it's been a few weeks, hasn't it? <laughs> First we had the busyness of Holy Week, and then as many of you know, right after Easter, I and my family came down with COVID. So I was basically out of the church office for two whole weeks, as I should have been, uh, so that I didn't pass on my germs to anyone else. And I'm just now getting into the swing of things. I'm recovering well. Thank you all for your cards and prayers. And I am slowly getting my energy back. So it's good to be back. It's good to do Biblical Lit. And this week is week 14 week 14. Now, maybe these couple weeks allowed you time to catch up. So if you are wondering where we are in the reading plan, week 14 is 2 Samuel chapter 16 through 1 Kings chapter 7. And it's a lot to take in. What we are reading this week is the wrap up of David's kingdom, as it were, and the beginning of Solomon's. And David's had a lot. If you remember before Easter, we we saw David at his best and his worst. That continues in our readings this week. We see David making some great decisions. We see David making some bad decisions. We see him talking to God about it every step of the way. And we see God's grace. We see God's grace and love of David, even in the midst of all of David's sin. So you're going to see a lot of good and bad of David, but mostly good. David is cleaning up, uh, if you will, at the end of his kingdom time. He is attempting to make things better than what they were. Uh, he has closure over his son Absalom. He has closure with um the military people around him. I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but it's a fascinating read. It reads like a soap opera. Um, so do, do give it a try. Now, as we go through David's end of times, we enter into 1 Kings. And 1 Kings begins with David being told to us that he's so old and he is no longer doing well that he can't keep his body warm. Uh, I think that that's a, a, a unique way of saying that he is near the end of his time. So we have his wife now, Bathsheba, queen, uh, seems to be his favored queen at this point. Um, she comes back on the scene because she's got a son, Solomon, and Solomon will eventually become the king after his father. Uh, we see that at play. We see David talking to Solomon, giving his son some advice. Uh, again, sometimes David's the, the best, and we see him at his best, and sometimes we see him at his worst. You'll see what I mean when you read that advice. And then we see David's death, and we see the rise of Solomon. What I would like to focus on here is the fact that we are featuring two kings here. We're featuring David, and we're featuring Solomon, and neither one of them is perfect. Neither one of them is, I would say, overwhelmingly good. Uh, David certainly had issues and sins. And again, you, you've been through that with me. Solomon is, comes on the scene. And I know our Sunday school stories talk to us about the wisdom of Solomon. And you see a little bit of that play in our reading for this week. But you also see that Solomon worshipped other gods. And you also see Solomon starts really getting into the money and really getting into the fame and starting to collect wives like their pairs of shoes. Um, you'll see that unfold. And so like his father, Solomon does some really great things. And eventually next week, we'll talk about that with Solomon rebuilding the temple um, and, and making a permanent home, if you will. And when I say rebuilding the temple, I don't mean rebuilding a temple. He's taking the tabernacle and rebuilding it into a temple. So let me just clarify that. But Solomon gives God a permanent home. And that comes, as I said, next week. We'll talk more about that. But at the same time, Solomon's also doing, again, some bad choices. 
So what can we learn from that? What can we learn from Israel's two favorite kings of David and Solomon? The fact that both of them were flawed. Both of them were not perfect. Both of them did great things and did some really bad things. So what can we learn from that? And I think as you go through these readings and you're reading the soap opera that's that's out here, um, I think it's a it's a unique time for us as human beings to think about our own selves being flawed too. We all are capable of doing great things, good things. And yet at the same time, we're also capable of doing bad things, selfish things. Things that only benefit maybe us and our loved ones. Choices we may make that are only with ourselves in mind. And I think as we read the stories of David and Solomon, and we can see how God loved them both, despite their flaws, first of all, gives us encouragement too, that God will love us in spite of all of our flaws, but it also, because we're able to learn as human beings, we can learn from the examples of David and Solomon to choose more often to do good, to choose more often to love our neighbor. And that's the message of Jesus. Jesus' message is about always making those choices to do good. I am certain that the disciples heard this often from Jesus about choosing to do good. And Jesus, knowing that they were not always going to choose to do good and the great things, that they would make mistakes, they would do selfish choice. We know that, but yet Jesus still loved them and loved them to the end, we are told. So for me this week, this week 14, um, again, I'm just enjoying the soap opera of David and Solomon, but I'm also looking at them through the lens of what can I learn from them? And how can I take the wisdom of Solomon and use it in my current life? And how can I see the mistakes that Solomon made and compare that to maybe some mistakes I have made? And how can I choose more often to do good? So I hope that you do join me um, in this reading. Some of this might be very familiar to you. It's very, very um, centered on stories of old time Sunday school lessons. And um, I, I hope that you are refreshing your mind. And for those of you who are reading this the first time, don't hesitate. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. And um, maybe we can even discuss it more personally one on one. But, but that's where we are, week 14. And I hope and pray that you get back into the habit of reading with me in this year of reading our Bible together. Many, many blessings to you and your loved ones. I'm glad to be back and I pray for you and your loved ones and for your family, friends, and neighbors that everyone stays healthy and that we all take care of our health because it's so important, my friends. Many, many blessings and peace.